for Braille and sports. Abu is a star athlete and a champion cricket player. He happens to be visually impaired and he desperately wants a job. But despite applying most days, he can't seem to get one. I think when I put disability or some kind of form that what my sight is, they either look away or they don't keen interest into it because they're not interested in the person that they want to go for this job and they're not up for it. How does that make you feel when you apply for jobs time and time again and then if you don't get them, that must be quite upsetting. It makes me a bit sometimes unhappy because I've not been working. It was a different story for Georgia. She has autism, but still beat 200 other applicants to get her dream apprenticeship as a healthcare assistant. But on her first day, Georgia's autism led to her having what she called a meltdown. The 18-year-old was told she could no longer continue to train for the role because they said she was physically incapable of doing it. And basically just said, you can't, we can't have you doing this, um, you've not got the right skills. I was like, you've obviously seen something to get me this far, but yet just one sudden thing and no. And you think that's because you're autistic? Because I was autistic and I had that meltdown on that particular day. And they said, you've just not got much hope in the care profession. You can reapply, but I doubt you'll get very far. And that's what I was told to my face. How did that make you feel? It was really hard, really hard, because it was something I was so looking forward to. Absolutely devastated. George is now working as a teaching assistant and is feeling happy and hopeful, but the pain of being asked to leave her last career has stayed with her. It's all about disability. It's something disability campaigner Helen Cook feels strongly about. She set up MyPlus, a network specifically aimed at helping disabled students get into work. You know, I manage a disability on a daily basis in a world that's not always geared up for it. And you have to demonstrate resilience and determination. And I have to influence people and persuade people and find solutions to problems. And actually, when you look at any job description, that's what employers are asking for. Like lawyer Michael, when he was 15, he caught meningitis and septicemia, which resulted in a year off school, severe hearing problems, ME and muscular pain in his legs. I had huge gaps in my CV. And the way I addressed that was um, to look at the skills I'd actually got from managing my disability, because that is where I'd learned. James, who suffers from chronic pain and dyspraxia, knew he couldn't hide his disability from employers. It sounds terrible. I could sell my experience of being disabled because it's taught me bits and pieces about being independent, about doing um, work from home and that kind of thing. While law student Paris hopes employers choose her, she lives with a chronic pain condition. Okay, so previously I've never disclosed it. I've always kept it hidden. And actually at the start of the university year, again, I wanted to keep it hidden. However, attending events like this has shown me that I don't need to and actually I can use this to my advantage because I can show the other skills that I excel in. For Abu, the quest for a job continues, but he hopes one day he can join the world of work, bringing with him his many talents. Minnie Stevenson, Five News.